In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can get the eyes on your LEGO Spike Prime robot working using Python code. Now the eyes are what you can see on your screen at the moment. They're sometimes called the distance sensor or the ultrasonic sensor. And they work by basically, if you look at this picture here, sending out a sound wave from the eyes themselves or the sensor themselves. So if we look at this robot, we're looking top down at it. Here's the eyes here. What they do is they actually send out a really high frequency sound. And it's at about 40 hertz, which is beyond the human hearing range. And that sound wave will head out and eventually it will hit an object in front of it. And that object will then reflect that sound wave like an echo. And it will work its way back to the ultrasonic sensor here. And the time taken for that sound wave to go out and then return will tell the robot how far away the object is in front of it. So that's a quick explanation of how our eyes, or our distance sensor, or our ultrasonic sensor works on our robot. Okay, so we're going to have a crack at getting that working today on our bot. So make sure you have powered up your robot and loaded up the LEGO Education Spike app. And we're going to make ourselves a new project. I'm going to give it the name um, Distance Sensor. So there's three different names for this sensor. I think I might just stick with the name Distance Sensor for now. Um, we're going to use Python code and we can click on Create to get started. Now make sure you minimize the knowledge base and the console like usual. Delete all the code that's come in and connect your robot. So I've connected here via the cable. That's why I've got the green circle around my hub. But you can connect via Bluetooth if you would like. Now I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see my code a bit better. All right, so to start with today, we're actually going to change our first line of code slightly. So in line number one, we're going to write from spike, import. Now we're going to go with the motor pair like we usually do. And we're also going to import one other thing. So instead of just using the motors today, we're going to be using the distance sensor. So let's write in distance sensor. Now be wary, it is one word, and I've got a capital D and a capital S in the name Distance Sensor. If you don't get that right, then we're going to have some errors pop up, so make sure you've imported both of those things. Now as always, we'll set up our movement motors first. So we'll give those wheels or movement motors the name, uh, movement motors. And first of all, we write equals motor pair, and then in brackets, just exp um, tell the computer which ports your movement motors are plugged into okay so i've got them plugged into port b and port a you should know how that works by now and we'll also set the default speed so movement motors dot set default oops speed and we'll set it to about 75 percent speed today put in some comments like usual Set up the movement motors and set the movement motor speed. Okay, so that's what we're used to putting in down on these lines. Now there's one other thing we're going to put in today. We need to set up or initialize, is the proper word for it, the distance sensor. Okay, so we need to come up with a name for our distance sensor. I'm going to keep it short this time. So instead of writing the word distance sensor, I'm going to write the word eyes. Okay, they are the eyes of the robot, so let's keep it short and sweet. And we're going to say eyes equals distance sensor and then we need to tell it which port our eyes are plugged into so if we just look up the top here we can see our eyes or our distance sensor is plugged into port C so in quotation marks and brackets just put C and that will just say um, set up the distance sensor which is the eyes all right so we've got everything set up now our movement motors are all set up the speed set and the eyes are set okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to get our robot to drive forward and as it drives forward if it senses something in front of it it's going to stop when it gets about 15 centimeters away from that object okay so we're going to put in a new line of code here on the movement motors we're going to tell it to move forward forever basically so if we do movement motors dot start that function called dot start here, or sorry, the start function, comes from the spike library, and that just tells our robot to continually move forward and never stop, basically. So it's just going to say keep moving forward forever. All right. The only time it is going to stop is if we tell it to in our code, but we could run our program now, and our robot will just keep on driving. Okay, you can test it if you'd like, but I'm not going to bother just yet. Now what I want to do next is I want to 
put in some code that will spot something in front of our robot. So when our eyes sense something, so this is how we write it. We write eyes, so we're referring to the distance sensor here. So the eyes, and we need to do dot weight, underscore four, underscore distance, underscore closer, and underscore then. That's a big function but it's the weight for distance closer than function. It comes um, from the spike library under this distance sensor section. And we're waiting for our eyes to spot something a certain distance away. So in brackets, we need to write 15 and then in quotation marks, centimeters. So we're just saying when we spot something that is 15 centimeters away, and on the next line, we need to tell the robot what to do. So at the moment, if our robot spots something 15 centimeters away, it doesn't know what to do. And basically, I just want it to stop. So if we write movement underscore motors dot stop, we've now called up the stop function from the spike library, and that stop function just stops all of our motors from moving. All right, so let's put in some comments here. I'll just write, wait until the robot senses something 15 centimeters or less away. And we'll say stop the robot moving. Um, so that's basically it. So I'm just going to set up my robot now and test it out and see how that goes. All right, so that worked pretty well for me. So I had my robot drive along and it stopped when it got within 15 centimeters of that little barrier. So the next thing that we might do is a new little challenge here. And what we're going to do is just basically expand on some of the code we've already learned in the past and also have a look at adding some new code in. What we're going to do with our robot now is we're going to get it to drive forward like we've already got done. And when it spots something 15 centimeters away, we're going to get it to stop and then wait for a couple of seconds before moving backwards away from the object. Okay, so there's a few things we need to do here that we haven't done before. First one, we're going to go up to the top of our code. And on line number two, we're going to make a bit of room. We're going to add in a new line of code that says from spike.control, import, and we're going to import a function called wait for seconds. Okay, now this function here allows us to pause our code. We'll stop it for running for a set number of seconds. And I'm going to add some more code related to this in, in just a moment. So that's the first new line of code we're adding in. It's from the spike control library. Uh, so after that, if we look down, our movement motors and our eyes are all being set up in this section. That doesn't need to change. Okay, we're going to go down to this bottom, whoop, sorry, this bottom section here. This is where we're going to start to fiddle with a few bits and pieces. So the start bit where we get our robot moving forward forever, that can stay as it is. Um, our eyes, when they spot something 15 centimeters away, we can leave that as it is. On the next line though, Actually, no, we might leave that next line. So we want our um, robot to stop when it spots something 15 centimeters away. Then we're going to call up that function I just talked about, the wait for seconds function. And in brackets, we write two. So what that does is just, I'll put a comment in here, it just says pause the code for two seconds. So it just stops everything from running. So basically you'll see your robot stop. It'll wait for two seconds and then it'll carry on with whatever the next line of code is. And the next line of code is just a simple move code. So it's just movement motors dot move. And we're moving backwards this time. So we're going to go back uh, minus 50. So that's minus 50 centimeters. And I'll put a comment in here that just says move backwards. And that's it basically. So all we've really changed here is when we spot an object in front of us, we wait for two seconds and then move backwards by about 50 centimeters. So let's give that a test run and see if it works. All right, so that worked quite well for me. So that's the second little challenge there done for today. I might do one more now. So in this final challenge, what we're going to do is we're going to drive forward and when we spot something that's about 15 centimeters away, we're going to stop. This time we're only going to wait for about half a second and then we're going to move backwards for 10 centimeters and then we're going to spin on the spot so we're going to face a new direction 
And once we face that new direction, then we're going to drive off in that new direction and then just start exploring again. And what we're going to do is make this code repeat forever. So this is basically an endless program. It's called an endless loop in coding. So our code is just going to keep running and running forever. And that means our robot is always going to be driving around the room. And if it spots an obstacle in front of it, it will just back up, change its direction and drive off in a new direction. So really, your robot should be able to drive around the room without running into anything. Okay, so let's just get that last little bit going now. So the first two lines of code are fine. All our imports there are fine as they are. Setting up our motors and our sensors, that's all fine. Uh, let's have a look at this bottom section. So we want our robot to start moving forever. That's fine. When he spots something within 15 centimeters, he stops moving. Now we're not going to wait for two seconds this time. Let's shorten it right down to half a second. So that means our code just stops for half a second. Uh, and then he's going to back up. We don't want to back up 50 centimeters, probably a little bit too far. So we'll back it up 10 centimeters. And then we're going to spin on the spot. So if you think back to one of our previous tutorials, we can use the move tank function to spin on the spot. So remember the move tank function allows us to send different amounts of speed or power to each of the motors. So move tank, we are going to spin for 10 centimeters, which isn't very far. And we'll put our left motor speed here uh, equal to minus 100. And our right speed, which is our speed being sent to our right motor, equal to 100. And that will just spin our robot on the spot. All right, um, so that's all good. So that's going to have our code working okay. He'll drive, he'll spot something 15 centimeters away and stop, wait for half a second, he'll back it up, and then he will spin. But that's where our program ends. What I said before, though, was I want this program to run forever. Okay, I don't want it to ever stop. So this bit I've got highlighted at the moment. This is the section of my code that I want to be running forever. So this is where we need to create an endless loop, which means we're always going to be running these lines of code. Okay, so just up above that little section, I'm going to write in while, and then a capital T for true, and then put a colon. And this is the line of code we need to use to create an endless loop. After we've written while true, we need to highlight all of the code below it and press tab on our keyboard to indent it. And what that does, this line here, while true, just says we're about to create an endless loop. So we're going to loop some code over and over and over again forever. And that code is everything beneath this line that has been indented. So all this code that has been indented, which means pushed across a little bit, it's got a little gap at the start of it here. That's the code we want to repeat forever. And that's it. So just remember that line there, while true. I might even put a comment in here. That just says that we are creating an endless loop. And if you want me to explain that a bit clearer, um, which will run the code forever. All right, so that is basically it. Um, so I am going to test that out now. I want you to put your robot on the ground, set up multiple barriers, or even have some um, somebody's feet in the way, or some walls or desks in the way, and see if your robot runs into them or not. Let's give it a go. All right, so testing that, that looks really good. So that has got our robot working. So this has been a pretty complex tutorial for you. Um, we have learned a few new tricks. We've learned how to import the distance sensor from our spike library, so we can now start to control our distance sensor. And as you can see here, this is how we set it up. All we need to do is just give our distance sensor a name and say that the distance sensor is plugged into whichever port it's plugged into. So I was in port C, okay. Another thing we brought in for the first time was under the spike control library, we imported the wait for seconds function. That allowed us to pause our code for a set number of seconds. We also learnt about moving forever. Okay, if we want our motors to spin forever, we just use the start function. If we want our motors to stop, we just use the stop function. 
Uh, what else did we look at? We looked at the eyes, and if we wanted to spot something a certain distance away, we use the wait for distance closer than function. <coughs> so in this case, we're looking at something 15 centimeters away. I think it can sense up to about a meter away, so 100 centimeters away. Any further than that, you're probably um, going to make it a little bit difficult for the robot to see. But about 100 centimeters would be the limit, I would say, for your robot's eyes. Uh, what else did we look at? We create an endless loop as well. So the while true is the line of code you need to use to run a program forever. And that's basically it. So a lot of new stuff there. It doesn't have to make perfect sense to you right now because we are going to be using all of those bits and pieces again in future programs. Uh, but as long as you've got a bit of an idea on how things are working, we're off to a good start. So I'll see you in the next video.